now recording. All right, so hello and welcome to the Skill Builder Workshop on finding images online. In the first half of this workshop, we're going to be talking about different types of images that you, image sites that you might encounter. We'll be highlighting our favorites and why they're our favorites. In addition, we'll be talking about the Google image search tool um, and things to watch out for when using that. Uh, then we'll move into another tool that we like for finding images, the Creative Commons search tool. So Anastasia is going to be showing that to you. And then we'll tell you a little bit more about Creative Commons licenses. Um, what are the different types of licenses that are out there? So you have a broader understanding of where you might need to be more cautious about how you're using the images that you are selecting that might be under Creative Commons. And then finally, we'll provide some information about uh, providing attribution, both what's a basic attribution for format that you could use, and also if you're working in WordPress, what's a good way to embed it in the captions. So that's gonna be our agenda for today. And so let's get started. So um, as we are looking for images, there are all sorts of different types of needs that we might have. We might be looking for um, trying to create a website where we might want images to convey emotion like joy, or we might need it to convey an action, like studying. So there's some sites like Unsplash that, and Pixabay that are great stock photo sites. They have high quality images that are by artists willing to let users reuse the images without fees or any kind of attribution. So those are two of our favorites, Unsplash and Pixabay, for those reasons. Artists just upload their content and agree to the terms that Unsplash or Pixabay has established. And so it's great if you do provide attribution, but you don't have to. So it makes for really nice, clean lines for how you're using your images. But those are the so ones I like. Yes. Oh, sorry. So did I just Google Unsplash on Google and would, would I find that yes. website? Yes, definitely. Um, or Pixabay, um, you can do that as well. Um, and then another one that we uh, recommend um, that has less quality, lesser quality um, images, but still they might be better for the kind of need where you're looking at a specific organization or an event that's happening. Flickr can be really useful for that. Organizations will upload their content um, and then they'll identify whether they're allowing things to be reused. Flickr is not universally um, a free image site, you do always have to look at the image and then identify the license that's listed there. So um, on that one, it was some rights reserves. Here's an example of an event that somebody posted in Seattle. So you can see that some of the images can be really good, high quality. Some of them won't be as high quality, um, like the McCain Library. We have our own Flickr site. I'm not a professional photographer. Mine don't look anything like this. So. Um, you'll get a lot of varying content, but you'll see that they're, they do have those clear license um, links there that will tell you more details about how you can use the content. And so in this case, that Some Rights Reserves links us to this license, which is a Creative Commons license, and it shows us what we have to do to be able to reuse this. So unlike Unsplash, which encourages the use of attribution, this one requires it. So you have to provide some level of attribution to the artist um, if you want to reuse it. In addition, it has some other stipulations, which not all Creative Commons licenses have. It has non-commercial um, stipulation. You can't use it on a t-shirt to sell because that would be a commercial use. You can't do derivatives either, which means that you can't change the way that it looks. You have to use it as is. So that's what, um, a site like Flickr, which we like to call those more user-generated photo storage sites because um, it gives the user a lot of control and the content just varies based off of user interests. And then finally, of the top three types of sites that we like to use, things like Wikimedia Commons are really great for factual kind of images. So we already covered with Unsplash and Pixabay, you get things that are emotions and actions, very broad generalized things that um, you might want to highlight as a concept. And then with Flickr, you're getting into very specific organizations, um, maybe even somebody attending a Beyonce concert. But with Wikimedia Con Commons, you're looking at things that are for more factual needs about culturally or historically significant people. Um, places like the Great Wall of China or events. 
So you can see that um, you may have thought that your image needs are all kind of the same, but really there's a lot of different types of images you might be looking for. And we wanted to classify them in this way of concepts and emotions versus personal experiences and events, factual um, images. So you can start thinking that the way that you're searching um, might depend on what you're really looking for. So doing a broad search in Google, um, Google image for sadness um, might pull up something that's from Unsplash or Pixabay, but it would never really pull up Flickr or Wikimedia Commons. And so we might as well just go to a site that we trust. I always like going to some site that I trust once I get to know them um, and I know how they operate and what to expect from them. And I try them first. So I usually start with Unsplash or Pixabay. I know that their work is high quality and I understand how the licensing works. Um, with Flickr, again, I understand the licensing. So some of the things that we haven't talked about that are two additional categories that you could potentially um, encounter is clip art. Um, that's, we've already talked a little bit about that some things are artist submissions. So the artists decide that they're gonna agree to the terms on a website that's run by somebody else and they upload their content. So they could upload it and there could be licenses that require that they be provided a fee um, for their work. For each item that's downloaded, they get some sort of monetary compensation. But many of them just say that um, you're uploading for kind of the professional experience or you just wanna make things freely available for others. And so um, for me, one of the, my favorite clip art sites is Open Clip Art. So you can see that here. I just typed in black cat. Um, again, if you wanna get to any of these sites, you can just Google open clip art. Um, that's the name of the site, it's openclipart.org. Or you could Google the other names that I've mentioned and you'll be able to get to them. But you can see that here I searched for black cat and I got several different options. These require no attribution. So um, I don't have to, if I'm trying to create a little storybook online, which I did using slide presentation and then a voiceover software, I was able to use just open clip art art to illustrate the story that I was trying to tell. And I didn't have to have citations underneath each of them because um, attribution wasn't required. So I love a source like this. And then the last one that we mentioned was that uh, transformative content. This is something that many people aren't going to be using, but if you're an artist like Anastasia, then you might want to have something that's going to be intentionally for reusing and changing. So remember there was that one license that I mentioned to you where you weren't allowed to make any changes. You might want to just go to a site that encourages changes. And so we're calling that transformative content. And one of our favorite sites for that is Morgfile. So let me skip ahead real quick to that site so you can take a look at it. This is an example. This is um, a user generated image. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, not all of them will look that way, but the way that they build their collection of work is they do these photo assignments. They challenge people who are um, members of the site to take photos um, based off of a theme. Today's theme is lunch break. Um, and then they submit it. And then those images are able to be reused by other creatives or for any kind of professional work because the, so it can transform it in whatever the way that they want. They, again, don't have to provide attribution. So those are some of the ways in which you might encounter images. Um, we will be doing more Q&A, but any initial questions right now that anybody wants to ask about our favorite types of images? Cool. We really want to leave time for questions, so that's why we're rushing through and giving you a, a snippet of what's out there um, so we can spend more time with it. So now we really want to talk about Google image search. So hopefully everybody has encountered Google image search. And instead of just doing a search for Google on stress and searching all, you can narrow it down to images. And then if you go over here to tools, has anybody ever used settings or tools? These are two things that if you're not an advanced um, Google user, you should definitely check out. We're not gonna use settings today, but if you click on tools, you'll see that this menu appears. You can um, narrow your search by size of image, by color, by type, when it was uploaded, um, and then also by the usage license. 
So um, I selected the usage license, Creative Commons license, which we've talked briefly about. Um, and then there's other licenses, um, commercial or other licenses. So the commercial or other licenses, um, Anastasia, do you know if that actually, that, that would include um, things that you could buy, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, cool. So, um, so that's how you can start your search. And what we wanted to point out to you in this is that you can even see it down here. Um, we have Pixabay and Flickr as two of our top um, results. So if you don't want to remember all these site names, you can definitely use this tool to access some of these tools. Um, and so this is what our search looks like for um, the word stress in Google image. You can see that I have things from Pixabay, an organization called Pixie. Um, there's some websites that probably are not image repositories, but they um, most likely have provided a Creative Commons license. Um, there's Wikimedia Commons, just like we covered. Um, and then just several other ones that, here's Flickr, several other ones that may be other sites that you'd want to get to know. So we really always recommend, whether you're doing research um, on a topic and looking for textual sources like articles, or if you're looking for images, you want to know the sources where you're getting things from. Don't always rely on the search engines to do the work for you, because even though they we designated that we want things that were Creative Commons image licenses, they don't really go in depth trying to truly understand what each site is about. They use an algorithm to understand just the basics, and so they're looking for Creative Commons licenses, but it is possible that this website has an article that is Creative Commons licensed, but um, the image may itself may not be licensed. I haven't checked that one, but that's just one thing to watch out for. So thinking back about the categories that we had of the types of images, we had talked about some that were more stock photo uh, sites that really gave us this beautiful um, kind of conceptual idea. We talked about the user generated ones, something that somebody that might be more of an amateur is trying to create an image that would be useful for them, but they're willing to share it with others. Um, and we talked about uh, clip art sites and also the um, Wikimedia Commons. So um, you can see those represented here. If we look at this next slide, you'll see that of the ones that we were looking at, there are several stock photo sites. Um, and this is where I wanted to point out why you might be cautious with some of these. So if you looked into each of these more in depth, you would find that only these first two are truly free sites. Um, they both allow artists to upload their work and um, allow their work to be reused without attribution. So those are truly free, um, robust sites. This one down here does offer free content, but they only offer about um, 10 different topics of um, images. They're really trying to get you to buy other things, so you have to be careful when they're just giving you a small percentage of what they actually have to offer, because it can be confusing when you get into their system, they might actually try to sell you something different. So that would be a site I'm probably not going to use in my results anymore, Pickopedia. Um, down here it says need pics. I hate this one, um, mainly because it's very cumbersome. It has a lot of ads and they just pulled images from all these other sites. They did nothing to add additional content in there. Um, and they make me go through so many ads to try to get to the image. So need pic, not going to be using you again. And then um, Pixa here. It's free, but you do have to log in. So if I don't want to give my information away, then that's something that I might not choose to use. And then finally, deposit photos. This one looked really promising, but because their images were really great, but they, and they are low cost, but you still have to pay a subscription to their site. It can be $10 um, for a certain number of pictures. But so if you're looking for truly free, Google image is not always going to give you truly free. So we just wanted to make sure that was clear to you. Any questions at this point about Google images, like the Google image search?
that you've had. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Anastasia, who's gonna tell us a little bit about Creative Commons Search. Thank you, Casey. So um, Creative Commons Search has uh, very quickly become my now top favorite in the, in the time of building this uh, presentation. Uh, it used to look a little bit different for anybody who's viewed it before, but it is exactly what it sounds like. You search for images, audio, video within um, a ton of different sources. So for example, next slide please. I just searched for the word Coke um, and it gave me a ton of different examples and these are all within varying uh, licenses or under diff different public domains. And uh, could you click for me, Casey? And click one more time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have I have hidden animations and stuff. Um, so I just wanted to point out that you can narrow down these results via the pu the license or the public domain, or you can also search by source. And that list that's listed there doesn't necessarily do it justice because this is a screenshot but it searches a ton, a ton of sources. So this also can cover Flickr, uh, Wikimedia Commons, Pixel Bay, that sort of thing. Next slide, please. And for the license or public domain, you can, um, the, well, I'll let Casey describe what those are in a, in a moment, but I just wanted to point out, they do have these question marks next to the symbols, which will indicate sort of what uh, it's saying exactly. Um, some of these have uh, excluded each other, some of these include each other, um, but it, that is a really cool feature of Creative Commons because you can search so many things and you can will down to the nitty gritty exactly what type of license you're looking for. Um, and I believe uh, the next slide, I'm gonna let Casey take over because um, she's so good at explaining it. So um, you can see that this is mimicking the page that we were just looking at. And I love this graphic because it tells you all the things that Creative Commons covers. It covers whether you're allowed to copy and publish. So anything that falls into any of these licenses, you can see that you're allowed to copy and publish, but there might be other stipulations. So for instance, if it's public domain, that's the only one where you're not required to do attribution. So um, the other ones, any other license that's a Creative Commons license requires attribution. And you might be thinking, Casey, you were just talking about Unsplash and some other websites that don't require attribution. Why must I do attribution now? Well, that's a Creative Commons thing. They, if it's licensed by Creative Commons, then attribution will be required. But if it's in the public domain or if it's, um, if the website that you're getting it from has their own set of license agreements, um, with the artist, then it might not require attribution. So you have to be mindful that there's three different ways that things can be free, public domain, creative commons, and uh, terms set by the artist themselves. So then the next one is commercial use. So um, we have been looking at things that were non-commercial. So you can see here that um, once we see this letter NC, 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 all of those means that um, attribution is required but you do not have to exclude, you do, you do have to make sure that it's um, non-commercial use. So you're not allowed to use it for your t-shirts, for any kind of marketing. The Agnes Scott College would not be allowed to put it on their website um, because usually on our website, our purpose is to market to people. Um, so it just depends on your use, but if it's for a commercial purpose of any sort where there could be, it can be construed that there's marketing. Anytime you see NC in the license, means non-commercial use. SA means that if you create something, you can create, you can modify it and change it into um, some other kind of work, but if you create it into another kind of work, then SA means that you have to let other people um, share it in the same way that you are allowed to be shared, that work was shared with you. So you can't suddenly profit um, and off, off an image. You'd have to make it a share-alike um, licensed work. So if that's going to be problematic for you, then you probably don't want to use that one. And you can see up here that SA is also available for commercial uses. Um, so you could use it onto a commercial website, but the image that you put up there would have to be something that others could take and reuse themselves. 
So then finally, no derivatives means that you can't change it in any way. So um, you have to use the image as is. So it would be for non-commercial purposes, using the image as is. And again, you could be using it for commercial purposes, but you just can't change it in any way. So hopefully that makes sense um, in terms of the Creative Commons licenses. Um, but that's pretty much what you'll be seeing in a lot of the um, image searches when you come to a page like this. So uh, just now that Casey's uh, so wonderfully explained the, the sort of uses and what licenses indicate what type of uses, you may be saying, okay, great, so I found the photo, then what do I do once I choose the photo and I'm trying to post it and I'm trying to give that attribution or give that credit? Um, and I do say credit in the sense of like, each of these photos was taken by an artist. And so you always wanna say, I'm not the person who made it or just you know give a shout out to the artist at least. Uh, so some sites make this really, really easy. Some sites you have to do maybe one extra step for, but in general, I'm going to use the example of putting it on your digital portfolio. So for my example, uh, let's say I picked this Coca-Cola can with the license filters that I've uh, chosen. And this Coca-Cola can, it is saying that they, I can post it, but I do need to give credit to the creator. And another reason why I love, um, I was about to call it Wikipedia Commons, Creative Commons, is they make giving credit so, so easy. So you see that Casey's hovering over that yellow copy button. So you copy that. And then once you're in your um, digital portfolio, you'll have your blog post, your page, whatever you would simply put in an image block, so to speak, uh, hit that upload button, and then upload your photo. And then you immediately are given an option to put a caption underneath the photo. That little blinking uh, thing at the very bottom of the photo is where you would paste the caption. And I also wanted to point out on the right-hand side, there is an alt text I always like to mention alt text for those who don't uh, realize it's there. That is very important for people who are using screen readers. Um, if they have some sort of visual impairment, that is where alt text comes in very, very handy. So always recommend doing alt text and then you just paste in your attribution or your, um, you're giving out credit. Next slide, please. And that's what it looks like. And you notice it's already linked. So the key things that are linked is the, the original image where it says Coke can and then buy and then it'll link to the author's page and then it'll say CC by 2.0, uh, which is the actual Creative Commons licensed reference. Um, and then the what it would look like on your front page or on your blog page is exactly like this. So just a simple little caption. You can also add in your own sort of um, description if you want to underneath that. But that's how I always recommend people put captions on their digital portfolio. You can do the exact same thing, let's say if you're putting it in your Instagram or if you're posting it on your Facebook or something like that. You would just paste it as a caption and there you have the credit. Um, next slide, please. And so as I mentioned, a lot of sites make this really, really easy where it's a simple copy paste situation. Unsplash is also a favorite of mine for this exact same reason. Uh, it already links uh, a link to the specific image and also a link to that specific artist or photographer in this case. Uh, next slide, please. So, and then for other sites, you might need to make a couple extra steps. Uh, but they are always going to be asking for when you when you're giving credit. There's usually a link to the specific image. Uh, if you could click, please. Yeah, this is a hidden an animation. Sorry, Casey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's my fault. I didn't. <laughs> but you link to the original image, uh, then you link to the artist profile. So specifically, getting that artist profile URL, whether that's on Flickr, on Unsplash, on Pixabay, wherever. And then you get a link to the CC license, if there is a CC license. They may have, as uh, Casey mentioned, some sites may have their own licensing situation, mm -hmm. but they're always gonna provide a link there. For this one, it says all rights reserved. If this were a live feed, you could click on it. It would take you to exactly what that means. And then you just add, pop that onto the end. And I would like to say that this one would mean that you're not allowed to use it unless uh, you ask this guy directly. So we just wanted to point out that there are um, ones in some sites that all rights reserves, it may look like it's a Creative Commons 
link, but it's not. Um, so just pay attention and always follow the link to the site. But even if you did have to ask permission, this would be the same style. You do um, a link to this image, you'd link to the author's profile. And then um, once they confirm for you that you're allowed to use it, you would just say used with permission by the artist. And that's all you have to do. All right. Yeah. And for um, all of the things that we mentioned, we have linked on here the libguide to uh, the copyright and libguide to multiple search tools that you can use uh, relating for image searches. Uh, we do want to remind everybody that the CDVL site is a .org site. I always take an opportunity to say that it is not .edu, it is .org. Um, and if you ever need a, a tutoring appointment for the CDVL, you can always visit the WC online, which is at scott.wconline.net. And you can contact CDVL email for digital literacy questions. And as always, you can contact the library email for copyright questions. And in fact, that's where our um, copyright, uh, our um, training materials for finding images usually lives because it's important for you to be able to know how to reuse works fairly. Um, so we have slide presentations that show you how do you determine if the image is free to use. Um, then we have a, work, um, a module where you learn about whether it's more advantageous to buy the, the work rather than just find free ones. And then we link to a lot of different collections that would be free image and music collection sites. What Anastasia was talking about with the citations, this page has a slide presentation about how to do citations. So you're welcome to use that. And then finally, if you want to know more about Creative Commons license, this page will give you the best for that. And it includes a Creative Commons chooser. So if you're licensing your own work, you can make sure that others can reuse it. So I'm gonna stop sharing now. And I'm also gonna end the recording. Thank you to any of our um, people who are watching this online. Um, you can contact us at the places that Anastasia mentioned. So let's stop our recording.